This lesson is on genes, alleles, and chromatids. These are all forms of DNA. And it's the idea of DNA being able to code for the characteristics on your body in your life. Human cells contain 46 strands of DNA in the nucleus. And this is in the nucleus of every cell in your body. So this can include a brain cell or a heart cell or a big toe cell. Pretty much every cell in your body has 46 strands of DNA. And DNA is mainly in the form of chromatin. Chromatin is wrapped around um, histones, which keep things organized. And you can see how chromatin is related to the double helix. So how many strands of chromatin are there in the human nucleus? Well, there's 46 strands, 46 strands of DNA. And one chromatin strand is very long. It contains a long length of nucleotides called an allele. And there might be lots of different alleles on this chromatin strand. An allele is a length of nucleotides that codes for a particular trait, such as eye color, and hair color. It could be even something to do with nerve function or any other trait that's important for your body's function. And mainly it can also be physical characteristics such as black hair and brown eyes. So if we wind up the chromatin into a big ball of DNA yarn, then it looks like this. It actually looks like a ball of yarn that we call chromatid. And the alleles are still on the chromatid. So DNA can take the form of a helix wrapped around histones in a rope called chromatin. And there's alleles on chromatin, which code for a particular trait. And we can wrap up the chromatin in a big ball of yarn. The allele is included in this big ball of yarn. And this ball of yarn is called a chromatid. You can see the allele on the chromatid. So remember that there are 46 strands of chromatin and they can wind up into 46 balls of yarn called chromatids. And there's alleles on these chromatids. So the 46 pieces equal 23 pairs. Chromatids you see come in matching pairs, some of which carry the same alleles. And this is a definition, homologous chromatids. These are matching chromatids carrying the same alleles. Homologous means matching. So a homologous pair of chromatids might have an allele for eye color and another allele for hair color. They could be located on the same chromatid in the same region. There are lots of homologous pairs in life. Earrings are homologous, skis are homologous, shoes are homologous. So any kind of matching pair is known as a homologous pair. A gene is defined as a pair of alleles located on a homologous pair of chromatids. So if you have two chromatids and they have alleles that code for the same thing, then we can say that the eye color gene has two alleles. So one gene is equal to two alleles. Let's give the alleles a name. The allele little b codes for blue eyes. So imagine you have two chromatids and they have two alleles on them and the alleles are little b and little b. So what does that mean? That means that if your genotype is little b, little b, which are the two alleles, then you have blue eyes. Now, what if your alleles said big b, big b? So this is still the eye color gene 
but this time your genotype, your two alleles are big B, big V. You, you would then have brown eyes. Your two alleles would be big B and big B. Now what if your alleles were big B and little b? What if you had a brown-eyed allele mixed with a blue-eyed allele? What would you have? Would you have one brown and one blue eye? What would you have? In fact, you would have two brown eyes. Big B, little b, you would have brown eyes, but you're hiding a little b. You have a blue-eyed allele, but you don't express it. Your alleles belong to you. But if you choose to have a baby, an offspring, then you pass your chromatids and your alleles to your baby. Alleles come in pairs, remember, on homologous chromatids inside the nucleus of every cell in your body. And we can think about this using the analogy of shoes. You no doubt have many shoes for many occasions. Let's think about chromatids as shoes. And of course, only a pair of shoes is useful. You can't just only have one shoe. Let's assume that one gene is equal to a pair of alleles on a pair of chromatids. Here are two Vulcans, Taping and Spock. And they own pairs of shoes so that they can run. There's some running shoes and ski. They both have a pair of skis and they both have dancing shoes. She's got two beautiful ladies shoes and he's got, look at this, a man's dancing shoe and a lady's dancing shoe. Take a look at Spock's dancing shoes very carefully. Note that he's got a lady's shoe and a man's shoe. And because they own these shoes, they have no problems doing these important activities. They can dance, they can run, and they can ski. Now Spock and Taping decide to produce offspring to mate to create a baby Vulcan. So Taping makes her eggs in her ovaries. And her eggs has to have one of each pair of shoe. One ski, one dancing shoe, and one runner. Those are her eggs. Now Spock also makes sperm, and in his sperm is one ski, one running shoe, and take a very close look, dancing shoe. And half of his sperm has a man's dancing shoe and the other half has a woman's dancing shoe. Notice that their eggs and sperm must have one of each pair of shoes so that the baby can ski and run and dance. Will their Vulcan be male or female? There's the little Vulcan there, male or female. That depends on which one of Spock's 100,000 sperm gets there first. Because remember, half of his sperm has the lady's dancing shoe and the other half has the man's dancing shoe. So it's really 50-50. Of his sperm, remember, contains the lady's shoe and the other half contains the man's shoe. And during fertilization, each of these sperm are hurtling towards the egg. So what kind of baby are we going to get? Well, the baby's going to get a ski from mum and a ski from dad, a running shoe from mum and a running shoe from dad, and a shoe from mum and a shoe from dad. If baby gets a woman's dancing shoe from dad, then baby is female. Now, if, remember half of dad's sperm had a man's dancing shoe. If, if the man's dancing shoe got there before the lady's dancing shoe got there, then this baby would be a male. We can draw a probability square to take a look at the probability of having a male or female 
Spock's sperm and Tepeng's eggs we can put on this square. We put the sperm on the side and we put the eggs on top. So remember Tepeng's eggs each contained one lady's shoe. And Spock's sperm, half of them had a lady's shoe and half of them had a man's shoe. So you can tell from the inside of the square the kinds of babies you're going to get. You're going to get a female baby if you have two ladies' shoes. You're going to get a male baby if you get a lady's shoe and a man's shoe. And that's why there's always a 50-50 chance of getting a girl or a boy whenever any kind of fertilization takes place. So you've got several pairs of chromatids and your personal homologous chromatids actually come from your biological mother and father. One of the pairs are from your mom and the other of the pairs are from your dad. And together they form alleles that give you your traits such as your brown eyes or your wonderful curly hair. But there's one set of chromatids that are quite special they give you the ability to reproduce. They're called the sex chromatids. And the sex chromatids can be two big ones. They're each from one from mom, one's from dad. They could be two big ones called XX, or they could be a big one and a small one, XY. And these determine whether you're going to be biologically female or biologically male. It doesn't say anything about your sexual orientation, whether you're gay or straight, or what gender you identify with. It just tells you whether you're going to make sperm or egg. So a female person, in this case, this person identifies as female, she makes eggs and her body cells are XX and her eggs are X. Now, her mate is biologically male and he's got body cells that are XY and he has Y sperm and X sperm. Now, their baby, what their baby will be for sex, it depends on which sperm comes. If an X sperm meets an X egg, then their baby's going to be biologically female. If a Y sperm meets a y egg, then their baby is going to be biologically male. We can turn this analogy back to eye color. Remember, little b, little b is blue eyes, big b, big b is brown eyes, and big b, little b is brown eyes. And using this information, we can find out what is the probability of offspring having different colored eyes if a big b, big b man mates with a little b, little b woman. What's the probability that their offspring will have blue eyes? Let's take a look. So the man's sperm is big b and big b. And the woman's eggs would be little b and little b. And when we combine these together into the possible offspring that we can get, we can see that all the babies would be big b, little b. So no one's going to have blue eyes. They're all going to have brown eyes, but they will be hiding the blue-eyed allele inside of them. What if two people who are big B, little b mate together? So we've got a big B, little b male and a big B, little b female. When they mate together, we can draw the square for that. Her eggs are big B or little b. His sperm are big B or little b. Notice that now it is possible to get blue eyes if the little b egg and the little b sperm mate together. All the other combinations that you get in this square have at least one big B and those babies would have brown eyes. So notice that one out of four babies would be little b, little b. 
and the probability is two out of four babies would be big B, little b, and one out of four babies could be big B, big B. So there's a 75% chance or three out of four chance that the baby would have brown eyes and one out of four chance that the baby would have blue eyes. Let's take a look at some Punnett square terms. That's the kind of square that I was just drawing, a Punnett square. A phenotype. A phenotype is the physical characteristic, like blue eyes or brown eyes. A genotype is a pair of alleles that code for phenotype. Big B, big B, if the alleles are the same, are homozygous. Little b, little b, if the alleles are the same, we call that homozygous. If the alleles are not the same, we call that heterozygous. So big B, big B is brown eyes. Big B, little b is also brown eyes. Little b, little b is blue eyes. We say that the brown eyes are homozygous dominant because brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes. We say that big B, little b is heterozygous and little b, little b are homozygous recessive. Blue eyes are called recessive traits because they can be hidden. So remember, alleles are like shoes. They always come in pairs. There's mom's shoes. There's dad's shoes. And we use Punnett squares to predict the probability of inheriting certain traits. And alleles occur on homologous chromatids. These are matching pairs that have genes on them, such as eye color, such as tongue rolling, such as having an interesting hairline, and also sex chromosomes determining male or female.